Okay, so we have a beautiful morning here on our uh, third day at Saltburn Golf Club. And as you can see, yesterday we managed to get all of the brackets and rails done. So today is panel day, so it's exciting. And we're blessed with a gorgeous, gorgeous morning. Um, there's gonna be lots of golfers playing today, I would imagine. We've got some teeing off just behind me, so. That was a good shot, good shot. Um, so yeah, it's an exciting day. Uh, we'll see how far we get today. We might get all 56 panels done, but like I said yesterday, I promised the lads um, an early finish, because it is Friday, and we worked late the other night getting all them panels carried in, so we'll see. Um, but you know, knowing them guys, they are very conscientious, so they'll probably say to me, it doesn't matter about the early finish, Andy, we'd rather get the panels done. So we'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens with that later. Um, that'll be interesting. So it would be nice to get all the panels finished for the weekend so that all the golfers can see, um, you know, what we've achieved during the week. Uh, so yeah, I've got a lot to get on with. Um, so let's get cracking. This is where our inverter's gonna go. So what we're gonna do now is get these DC cables out onto this west roof. Uh, so that we can at least start putting the panels on and getting them connected in. So we've got four, str uh, two strings, so four DC cables. So Leo's going to pull this. Do you want to take it, Leo? Let's take one. Right. So if you separate them now, so just so you just want just focus on one string at a time. Yeah, so the first, just, just separate the string, that string, pause and neg. You just want one long enough to go to the, just whichever row you're doing first, this end. So obviously we're doing two rows, so a string per row, 17 panels. And the end of our first, uh, the end of our row is almost, I think, till I get out there, Pretty sure it's almost where we're at. So we'll only have a short one to go here, and then the other one the, uh, is gonna have to go all the way to the other end. So that Leo's just pulling them through now. And then it'll be the same on the bottom row. So obviously still need to build the framework here, which I'm gonna take some measurements of today. And I'm gonna get the wood tomorrow actually, because it's Saturday, so I'll go and get the wood ready for Monday. Get something built here. But yeah, DC cables can clip down wherever we want onto our board. Well, as you can see, we've got the first string on now, the first top row of 17 panels. I've been up and down the 18th, I don't know how many times. After almost every panel, I've gone back all the way, <laughs> halfway up just to check they're going to be straight because as solar installers will know especially when you're doing a long a long row like that you could it looks like you're straight and even if you're a millimeter or two out on your first panel by the end of the row you could be a good foot out um, so yeah being up and down eyeing it up because that's really the only way best way of doing it is just eyeballing it so and they are bang on level because what i don't want is to be the talk of the clubhouse and the renaming the 18th hole the cockeyed solar panel hole every time they walk down there our panels will be facing them, so i don't want that but yeah they're all on i've just tested we've got uh, nearly 800 volts there on this uh, string the sun's blasting so they're going to do really well out of these uh, solar panels it's like the open championship here today there's loads of golfers teeing off enjoying this weather and I'm so jealous. I can't wait to tee off down this first at the end of this job. And I've pictured my shot as well. I've pictured it over and over. It's gonna go straight down the middle. I might even drive the green, to be honest with you. That's what I'm picturing in my mind. Um, but we'll see if that actually happens. So yeah, all going well. We're gonna start the second row now and hopefully get them as equally looking as straight uh, as those ones. So yeah, it's all going good. As you can see there, Leo and Brad are just taking the last one up now. 
get that plugged in and that's that string up and running so uh, I think we'll call it a day one thing led to another and uh, it's took a little longer than we thought but I've had to nip out and get some gear and it's just been uh, one of those days and it's Friday as well and I promised them an early finish so I think we'll call that it we just wanted to make sure that these panels along this front side look absolutely perfect because they're going to be under scrutiny yeah so we've really wanted to make sure that we get it absolutely bang on and i think it is i've been all the way up to the tee box on the 18th and had a look back and they look absolutely class so i'm very pleased so yeah i'm going to uh, go inside now and just get a few measurements for the uh for the wooden structure that we're going to build for the inverter and everything which weighs a ton by the way so it's going to have to be a, a solid structure i'm going to get those measurements and then uh I'll get that gear tomorrow for Monday and then we'll come back finish the panels Monday and then start wiring the inverter and strings and everything like that so yeah all good so we're gonna go and enjoy the weekend now I wasn't gonna have a bottle of wine but I think I am now. treat myself with a nice bottle of red I think I've earned it not, not sure whether you would agree like I've mainly been doing video and drone footage <laughs> Well, it's Monday morning and it's an absolutely stunning morning for golf. Perfect conditions. There isn't an ounce of wind. Uh, it's just not too hot. It's perfect. I'm so jealous of everyone teeing off behind me. Uh, I will get my turn though, um, eventually when we finish this job. So uh, Friday was, was good. We made some good progress. We got all of the west side uh, finished. Um, we, di we did encounter a couple of issues there. That we've been sent the wrong clamps, so we didn't quite make as much progress on Friday as I would have liked. But it's not a race, it's a marathon. And the main thing is we do a good job. So today I'm hoping that we, uh, we make some significant inroads. We're obviously gonna get these panels finished now, all of them. Uh, Brad's already just grinding out there behind me. Uh, we've just got the DC cables straight out. That was the first thing we did as soon as we got here. DC cables out for the 16 panels that are going on this uh, south roof, the large south roof. So yeah, uh, we're going to make a good start today. I, obviously I went and got the wood um, on Saturday for our little wall that we're going to build or that I'm going to build. I'm going to make a start on that actually uh, as they're doing the panels and then we can look at getting the inverter and everything mounted all the isolators so yeah we'll see how much progress we make i'd like to think that we could get all the cables clipped back to position maybe even make a start on the ac cable get that all clipped in place uh, and then yeah tomorrow should be sort of finishing off wiring up uh, connecting everything in and hopefully going live so yeah anyway he's about to tee off so I'll be quiet. So we'll see how we get on today. Right, so while Brad and Leo are quite content, they've got plenty to do down there with those panels, I'm going to make a start on my little carpentry project. I must say, I do enjoy working with wood. I enjoy, oh, that's, that's uh, I'll rephrase that. I do enjoy a bit of joinery from time to time. Uh, at home, I like to do my own bits. Um, built a nice summer house and I say that, so I've added some pressure now, so it's got to look good because I know I'll be getting critiqued on it. Um, by you guys so what I'm thinking of doing because it doesn't have to come all the way to the bottom although it does need some to be sturdy but I think I'm gonna put some supports here straight down fixed to this and fixed to that uh, joist there and, if, and then two more here one two and then another one at the end and then a cross piece that those two can fix to then I've got a nice big thick piece of um, chipboard that I'm going to fix to it. Then we've got some hardy backer that I'm going to fix to that as well. So I'm, I should have a, a, end up with something about this high, something like that. 
and this about from there to about there, nice and straight. Okay, so I think that's the framework done. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. It's very, very sturdy. Uh, I mean, there might be joiners watching this who are thinking, oh my God, what are you doing? But for an electrician, that ain't going nowhere. It's all nice and level. This, is, this side is well secured here. I mean, these are basically like support. And then this side here is well and truly fixed there. Um, I mean, the inverter is heavy, but I don't think it really needs it, but I have put an extra just a support in the middle of this as well, because obviously I, that, that's fixed to that side, that's fixed to that side, and this is just going to provide even more support so the weight isn't all just pulling from the top. So I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to now just board it, basically, get the boards on and the hardy backer, and then we've got our wall, and we can start fixing stuff. Exciting times! Looking good. So that's my wall built. Um, so now it's time to get things mounted. I'm going to start with the inverter. And I'm not quite sure what, what the inverter actually weighs. Uh, apart from I know it weighs a lot. I've looked everywhere for what it actually is in kilograms. In fact, I'll add it into the video once I've actually found out. Um, but what I'm surprised at, I mean, this is the mountain bracket. There's actually only four fixing points, which I'm quite surprised about. So I'm going to have to make sure that this is well fixed. So I do have some bolts that I was thinking of bolting right through, nut and bolt, uh, which I think might give it the best um, fixing. Um, and this is basically about where the inverter sits. That's the top of the inverter. So I want to leave myself some room along the bottom. I want to leave myself some room down the side where I'm going to come down. I'm going to bring 50 by 50 down here for the uh, DC cables and possibly some more 50 by 50 there. And we'll just mount our DC isolators along the top, I think. So I'm just going to get this marked up. I'm going to get me uh, holes drilled, ready for the bolts. And then I'll have to call the lads Come and give me a hand with it. Because although I go to the gym, I'm not that strong to lift this inverter by myself. And I've only just started going back to the gym this week, last week. So. <laughs> Right, so as you can see, I've got um, my isolators are all mounted. I think they look absolutely great there. Um, and now I'm going to mount this, which, look at, it's not heavy. Uh, this is the, what I was talking about earlier, this is the uh, Export Power Manager, I think it's called. So we've not fitted one of these, but apparently this is what you need when you've got more than one CT and it can also limit your export uh, should you have an export limitation but we don't on this job because obviously we put our application in with the DNO long before we, we came here and uh, there's no export limitation so we won't need it for that but we will need it to monitor the three CTs because obviously it's three phase so there you've got CT one two and three uh, power in. I'm pretty sure it can share the same power uh, as our main power cable. I'm going to have to check on that because if not we might have to do something for a small board up here or just downgrade it. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to get it mounted first. So I'm going to put this probably maybe there or a bit further maybe there. Yeah. So I'm kind of glad I'm putting this on because I've obviously got all that room to the right. And that's why I left the room to the right because I thought I might need this. So it's going to look nice. So the lads are just starting 
the last roof. We've just got the DC cables out. We've just got the DC cables out for that small south roof with the six panels. So they're just making a start on that now. So it won't take them long to get them on because I'm going to need one of them. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to crack on here till they're ready. And then we'll go down two of us into the ladies changing rooms where the mains board is. And I'm just going to get all that work done. So down there, I'm going to need to put another AC isolator in uh, a generation meter and then connect into the board. So yeah, I'm just going to go and do that. That should be like a couple of hours, you see. So, because it's ladies day tomorrow. Um, so it makes sense to do it a day. Otherwise there'll be a lot of annoyed ladies that can't use the changing rooms tomorrow, which we don't want. Definitely don't want to upset anyone. So yeah, we'll try and get that bit done today. And that takes a lot of pressure off. That means tomorrow we'll be virtually ready to power up. So yeah. It's also super handy that this light here, I mean, I would say that it was planned, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, it looks great, doesn't it, with the light above. That's it. Pop this on. Stand back and have a look. Absolutely perfect. Oh, nice. I'm happy with that. So we've just managed to get the cable our cable down from the loft. Here it is here. Big EV Ultra. Um, and so there's not much room in here, as you can tell, um, which is pretty much the same in most commercial uh, electric cupboards. It is tight, there's hardly any room, but that's our AC isolator, I'm thinking. There's just slots in there. And I was thinking whether I could put the gen meter up in the loft or in here, but I think I'd like to get it in here because obviously the main meters here, you know, if they were wanting to read the meters, they just read them all together. So it, I can just probably fit our meter here. So we need to come out, we're coming out with this board here, putting a new uh, MCB in there. So then out of there into our first AC isolator, into the generation meter, and then out of the generation meter all the way back to our inverter. So yeah, we're just gonna try and get on with this because uh, we've got a nice little window. There's literally no ladies on the course at all now. It's like ladies day tomorrow. So this gives us the ideal opportunity to, to get as much work done in here as possible today. In fact, get all of it done. So that all we need to do tomorrow is get in at some point and power up. Okay, so I've managed to uh, get this side of things finished. Uh, we've got our generation meter, the AC isolator, and I've just brought our uh, EV Ultra down into this junction box, which then I can jump out of that with the um, CT cables uh, for the CT clamps. I mean, as you can see, there's hardly any room in here at all, so difficult to get things dressed nice. Um, and I'm just glad we managed to actually fit our items in there, actually. Ran out of here with some FlexiCon and then singles into the main unit there, which we're going to actually connect into that tomorrow because um, I've been sent the wrong, the wrong breaker. Um, so we'll do that tomorrow, but that's all of that sort of fiddly work done. Uh, and now we can work back over uh, at the inverter tomorrow because it's like half past four now. So it's time to knock off. I've had enough. It's time to go home. So yeah, good. All good. Um, so we'll see you again tomorrow. Ok, 
Okay, so I've just been down into the ladies' changing rooms there um, to get connected in because, uh, like I say, it's ladies' day and they'll be arriving in the next hour or so. Uh, so I thought I'll jump in there and get us connected in. So that's all that AC side done now. So that really takes the pressure off. It means that like, later on today, when we've finished on this board here, it's just a case of nipping down, knocking on the door, going in and just switching on and powering the isolator on, and then we're good to go. Um, so that's good. Uh, the two lads have been dressing the DC and AC cables both ways. DC's already back, Brad's won that race, and then uh, Leo's just finishing off this AC, which is looking really nice and neat. Both of those uh, look absolutely class. So yeah, that's done. Um, so now it's just a case of really uh, getting all this finished. Um, I've got a few bits here uh, to finish this export power manager, uh, which I've been swatting up about. Um, basically, we need to down fuse it so I've got this like enclosure with a DIN rail on. Uh, we're gonna put some six amp MCBs in there, which will fuse down and tee off and supply this export manager. And then obviously we'll put our uh, six mil three, uh, six mil five core straight into here. But we also need the five core into the export manager. That has to be three phase as well. Um, so we've got our CT clamps connected at the origin. Um, we just must make sure that we get all of the sort of phases correct. We don't want to be swapping phases and, and all that. So that everything's been marked up. We've got to make sure we avoid doing that. Um, so yeah, we've got a bit of SY cable, uh, some 1.5 five core for the export power manager, and then some uh, six mil five core for the inverter. And then I've got some, I'm hoping we can use these uh, to save making the uh, Cat5 ends off. Just got some pre-made Cat5 patch leads to go in between the export manager and the inverter. So, yeah, so uh, we're going to get on with that now. But as long as that side of things goes well, we, uh, we might be powering up today. Okay, so I've done most of the internal wiring now. Uh, the AC isolator is all done. We've got power, or we've wired to the inverter. We've got the main AC in there. And then we've got our AC supply to the export manager. I've just made up these three CT cables here uh, with the connectors that they provide. So what we've got to do is just pop these in, but then I'm going to dress them into this junction box um, and then connect them to my uh, EV Ultra um, pairs, um, screen pairs there. So I've made a note what colours I've used in here for which phase, because we've got CT1, 2 and 3 for each phase. We've got to make sure that we get these phases right. So I, I can pop these in um, like so. They fit nice and snug, to be honest. So far, so good with the uh, with the Solus gear. I like it. What we're having to do here, you can see Brad behind me is just working away there, installing a new export power manager. And the reason being is that uh, we've learned a valuable lesson here. We were sent the wrong export power manager initially. The one we were sent, if anybody is installing Solus um, three phase, useful information. If you're planning on installing the export power manager away from the origin, i.e. where the, you know, the electricity first centers the property, where the main cutout is, then what you're going to need is the export manager pro. We had the export manager plus. That was what was sent to us. So it was a little bit of miscommunication between ourselves and the supplier, um, but it's sorted. We've been sent the right one now. So what it means is, um, we had the data signal coming through with the cables all the way from the CTs that we had around the main cutout. And that signal was traveling about 30 meters to this point, which 
it's uh, going to affect the readings. So that's why we were getting poor readings on the CTs, which we found out when we powered it all up. So yeah, so what we've done is we've had the Export Manager Pro sent to us now, which we've already been down into the electricity meter cupboard. And the reason why we couldn't install it down there is because it is absolutely ram jam packed in that cupboard. There's hardly any space. Fortunately, there was just enough space for us to fit this uh, extra little digital um, meter, three phase meter that comes with the Export Manager Pro. So basically that sits in that cupboard uh, with a three phase power supply to it. And the CT clamps come straight from that and they're only about a meter and a half long in length, uh, the cable to the CT. And, and that then sends just a twin pair, which we luckily already had within the EV Ultra cable, all the way up to here. So the actual CTs are connected to the meter in the cupboard downstairs, sending a signal uh, uh, up to the Export Manager Pro, and that allows you to have the Export Manager away from the origin, which is what we need in this case, obviously, because it's in the loft. So we've done all that work down there in the cupboard, and now we're just putting the, uh, the new one on, which is, it is a, a lot smaller, actually. It's probably about just under half the size of the, uh, the one we had. But luckily, all the work that we've done here with, these, with, with the three uh, MCBs, all of that sort of stuff was still necessary. So it's pretty much the same. We're just uh, swapping out the units. Uh, we don't need these three CTs now. We're gonna only need the one, which is gonna be this one. And that's just gonna plug in. We can remove these two here. We don't need them because we only need the one single data signal from downstairs. Hope that made sense. The other thing that we've uh, come across is the CTs that we need to use have to be uh, split core CTs and they have to have a, a secondary um, a secondary current of five amps um, so the ones we've got because we've got 100 amp fuses we've got 100 slash fives so 100 amp slash five amp and then when we set up and configure this export power manager we need to make sure that the CT ratio is the same as the CTs that we put on so yeah, we've done all that work to the roof and all the wiring, all the panels and everything else. And the thing that caught us out right at the end is just the CTs. Uh, the system can still work as normal, but what the customer wouldn't be able to see is the load that's being used in the property and what's being exported. They can see the generation, but they can't see how it's split off. So that's why we have to sort this. So we're nearly done. Once this is up and running, we're finished. So there you go. So uh, yeah, see how this goes. And when we got it up and running, we'll come back to you. So that's it. The system is complete and up and running. And I couldn't be any happier with how this job has gone. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, the lads have done a fantastic job. The whole thing looks amazing. The customer's very happy. And that's all that counts. And now it's time for this thing to really start saving this golf club some money on their energy bills and it's already doing it as we speak. This unit, this Export Manager Pro, is, has worked a treat. Uh, we now are sending digitally our CT clamp signals all the way up 30 meters away to this unit here. And this is what is reading what each phase is doing, which I really like. Like on the app itself, you can see an overview uh, of what uh, the load is currently being used in the whole property as a whole, uh, what the generation is doing, uh, and what is being exported, etc. But what you can do on here, which I really like, I mean, it's not, not something the customer is ever going to be looking at, but you know, we can go into information on here and I can see what each of the phases is doing right now. Um, I can see there that we've got minus 460 watts on the on phase one, uh, plus 1,020 watts phase two, and minus 940 watts phase three. So collectively, as a whole, we are plus 1,260 watts, which means that we are generating more than what the property is actually using. The load power here. Is, it's changing all the time as the club's using different amounts, but there, 12.4, the club is using, it's going down again, and the inverter is uh, generating 11.2. Um, so it's, now it's just peaking below what the club's using, so 
we're very much, it's very much uh, identical to what the club's needing now. There you go. Club's gone down to 8.7, but we're generating 11 kilowatts. So they're generating more than they need, so then the excess will be exported. So the club is obviously going to look at the data over the next few months, be able to see a real difference in what they're drawing from the grid as the solar does its thing. So yeah, it's been a fantastic job. We really hope you've enjoyed watching these videos of this installation. We've certainly enjoyed making them. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. And all that's left to do now is have a game of golf. Okay, so it's a couple of weeks later and we're blessed with an absolutely beautiful day. And it is my turn to tee off on this first hole. So this is Bill, part of the committee, and Bill was instrumental in uh, getting us the solar job, weren't you? He did a lot of, awful lot of uh, work. It was a lot of hard work. A yeah. lot of hard work. Not with you, I may say. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we got there in the end. We did, yeah. And it looks great, doesn't it? It does absolutely look fantastic. And they're still there. Yeah. Two weeks later. And then blown away. Yeah. <laughs> in all the gales. They'll be doing well today as well, oh, won't they? Oh, I would think yeah. so, yeah. We've had some bad days, but we've had some yeah, really good days. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, that time has come. I've been watching so many people tee off. Uh, on this hole and uh, I've been fantasising about hitting it straight down. Is that the line over that tree, would you say? The line? Is, is that is where a, the green is? There's a, there's a, no, there's a marker. Uh, oh see, yeah, see, see the marker, yeah. yeah. You want to be right, you want to be towards the marker. Do you? Yeah. Because doesn't it dog leg left? It dogs leg left. Mm. So if you, if you go over that tree, yeah. you'll be in trouble because there's an out of bounds on the left hand side. Over that tree there, that little yeah, a one? Bit yeah, a bit further, a bit further. Right. A bit further left, whatever it is. I'll just crack it down and see what happens. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you can go first, yeah. yeah. Oh well, not quite as I had imagined. Well, here we are, it's the 18th tee where it all began. Uh, we've had a fantastic round and the sun's been amazing. We've had a lovely day, the weather's been amazing. And look at that view, um, a very inviting tee shot. This is the par three, the 18th. And what I'm happy to see is the panels are all lovely and straight, so that's good. But yeah, so here we go. I'm desperate to get this on the green. So it's two, 213 yards, five iron. Here we go. Come on, baby. All right. That was a nice strike as well. It looks long. Oh well, better look next time. Anyway, well, cheers. Cheers, Bill. Good health. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for a fantastic yeah. oh, game. No at all. So that was it. We've had a lovely day. Um, ended up with a four on the last, which I'll settle for. I would have liked a par, but um, I'll settle for a four. And it's been just a beautiful day, beautiful golf course. Uh, I might have to think about joining here now, I think. Um, but yeah, it's just been, uh, it's nice to sit here on the balcony where we sat having our lunch every day, looking at all the other golfers teeing off. And now we've finally uh, been and had a game myself. So uh, we're going to enjoy this pint, aren't we, Bill? Absolutely, absolutely. That's great. You uh, played really well today, I must admit. After the first few holes, yeah, you were cracking the ball few really disasters. well. A, a long way. And, and I, only lost, I only lost one ball, wow. which is, uh, that's good for me. Yeah, that's good. good so for cheers, anybody. matey. Anyway, cheers.